I'm here with something a little bit different than I normally do. Typically, when I pick up new card inventory, it's a fairly large purchase. Um, I generally buy out larger collections. I've picked up storage units, you know, full garage sales, estate sales, that type of thing. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll also know that I've got two young boys. We really enjoy going to card shows, but most of the time when we're there, I'm just chasing them around. Um, it's really hard for me to get anything done, pick anything up from my own collection, uh, finish sets, which is something I really like to do, don't get much of a chance to, but uh, you know, it's that season and I love them and we're just making plenty of memories at the card shows, so I'm not complaining at all. At a recent one, though, I was actually able to pick up something, one, for myself, and two, really different than what I normally do. What I've got here is a binder uh, that really caught my eye uh, as I was talking to uh, a vendor there, and I ended up picking it up. I'll tell you what I paid for it in a little while, but um, this binder, like I said, it really caught my eyes. Um, one of the things as I was flipping through it was an Alex Rodriguez die cut uh, 1994 SP rookie card. Now that card right now, I think I comped it out and it's like a 20 to $50 raw card. Um, so it's nothing huge. But when I really got back into the hobby in 2010 and started looking back at some of the junk era players and uh, rebuilding my collection, that card was a really big card. I think if, if memory serves, it was like a one to $200 card raw. Um, not quite ever to the level of the 93 Jeter uh, SP, but but it was it was like one of A-Rod's top one or two cards. So obviously, with the PED scandal, that card just isn't as big as it used to be. But it was something that still caught my eye. And as I flipped through this binder, um, I just saw more and more stuff that, that made me really want to make an offer on buying the whole thing. So, I started kind of low. Um, I think the guy said that there were there were over 300 cards, I believe. Can't remember. Um, and just flipping through, I was like, you know, 300 bucks. We ended up settling at $500 for this binder. I believe, you know, I can't remember exactly how many there are. I may put a voiceover over that one. Normally, I'm buying literally truckloads of cards and the way that I value a truckload of boxes is very different than a binder. Um, you know, just a single binder with 300-ish cards, mostly kind of mid-end but valuable singles. You know, some things that'll sell by themselves, $2, $20, $30 maybe. So not super high-end cards, but again, this is not something that you just kind of like bulk out generally. So I've got this binder. I don't know if it's worth the $500 that I paid for it. And so I'm going to see if it is. With so many decently valued singles, I figured this is going to, this would be a fun one to just kind of dive into and, and really, you know, pick apart the deal, see how well I did. You know, without further ado, let's take a look at what we got. Now, first off, when you open this binder up, it's like, boom, Derek Jeter. Um, and the captain is <laughs> always a safe bet. But you've got kind of a, uh, a minor league card, not the greatest. A couple of early Bowman's best, a finest 94 upper deck foil. And the good thing about these is, you know, they're very, very sharp. And again, Jeter's two, three bucks as singles. There's an insert. You open it up and boom, best cuts refractor. So you've got a Jeter refractor. You got two more Jeter refractors. You've got another Jeter refractor. Um, this one right here, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's numbered out of 2,500. True blue out of 500. Oh man, I've actually looked through this binder and that one just caught my eye. That card right there, that card right there is a nice card. I may actually, uh, Pricing these out, 
I may take a single or two and and, uh, and grade some, but that right there. All right, fantastic. A ticket studs insert. A studio, a studio leaf. Is that anything? I don't believe one of two thousand. So that is um, that is. I'm not sure if it's a press proof, artist proof, something like that. But that right there. That is a low print parallel, another uh, classic, um, another classic rookie, another classic rookie, some SP excitements, three of them, three SP excitements from probably 99, 2001, so 2001, um, but I believe those are, yep, those are some inserts, so that's three pages of, three pages of Derek Jeter, including some really nice low numbers. Next, you got Ken Griffey Jr., another you know great junk era player that you can't go wrong with. Not a huge card, but I'll be honest, I actually sell this card quite often on my streams. It is the um, the triple picture uh, from Upper Deck, and I'm not sure how long they ran it, but starting in '89 uh, through '90, '91, which I believe this is uh, no '92 at least. Um, I can't remember if they go through '93. But you know a bunch of the star players and then some of the semi stars as well. Their uh, their card is a triple kit picture. Can't remember what it's called exactly, but um, you know kind of you know shows kind of some motion of the action. And to this day, those cards remain a you know a halfway popular single that you can sell for a buck or two. Um, Nolan Ryan, Ricky Henderson, Eddie Murray. Uh, Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders, I think, has one of the coolest ones. But, um, you know, again, that's just a cool card right there. A base Griffey. That's a Griffey insert, I believe. And I'm going to have to check on this one. This uh, this card right here, it actually has like a, 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 um, a, a glow in the dark. You can check it with a black light, which I think um, makes, uh, makes a more valuable version of that card. Uh, but we've got a first rate... I'm looking to see if that one's that's just a you know, that's an insert all star salute insert that's a leaf limited you know kind of some base stuff but there's a finest with its uh, finest with its protector base Griffey spirit of the game insert another finest some early stuff a best cuts insert Donruss silver press proof so that's gonna be out of I believe 1500 1500 so 1500 on a Laser of a Griffey. Dang, that one, that one might be another grader. We will see. Couple. Okay, so then we switch uh, from Griffey to A Rod. And again, I, A Rod is definitely below the peak of his popularity, but he's kind of come back and he's, I'm going to say, a little bit more fan friendly than, say, uh, Barry Bonds. Um, so people like A Rod. Um, and I, I, I see his uh, his cards kind of maintaining and, and gaining a little value. But there's three finest. There are five rookie cards, uh, rookie years from the uh, the alumni subset from uh, 94 Collector's Choice. I'm looking to see if any of those, I think there was the, uh, like the Electric Diamond or something. I can't remember. Cool card. You've got the Leaf Steel. Um, there we've got an action-packed rookie, a Pacific uh, Prism that are cool. Uh, some base stuff. Uh, oh, that's the uh, that's a rookie '95 rookie um, from uh, Sport Flicks. Some '94 '94 classic stuff. A New Age insert. Just a SP. Um, turn the page. A dual relic. There's a bat and jersey SPX materials. There is a uh, um, let's see, a Milestones Hits Refractor out of 3,000. Here is a sweet card, Flare Showcase. Uh, let's see, uh, Flare Showcase. Showcase? I don't know what the heck. But that is one of 1,500, another Refractor. That's the card that I was telling you about at the beginning. That is the SP Die Cut. Then, oh snap, look at this, a Michael Jordan uh, 1994 Michael Jordan card. That uh, you know his kind of rookie card from baseball. That is a popular card. I think I flipped right past that one. 
from Aaron, we go to Big Mac. A die cut, a die cut that is, oh, I thought it may be out of, um, that, that one may be a limited print. Another die cut, production line out of 393. So a super, super low print right there. I think that one's going to be uh, a heritage proof. So there's that one, tops gold from 92, a shining stars, cool insert there from 99. Couple more Big Mac 2001 top stars, Hank Aaron Award contenders, and you get Chipper Jones. Let's see, did I take that one? Yeah. Um, some Chipper stuff. There's a, oh, this one is very cool because this is the inaugural, let's see, Marlins? Yeah. 93 inaugural Marlins, inaugural Rockies, tops sets. Um, obviously, the Derek Jeter out of that set is the number one card. But both of those were limited to like 5,000 sets. Um, and so this is the 93 Prospects, um, Chipper Jones, inaugural Marlins. That's a cool card. This one's probably another proof, maybe not. No. I don't know. What was that one? I can't even remember. All right, so that, uh, this is a very cool card right here. That's the uh, stained glass um, one of the prettiest inserts from the 90s uh, from studio and I I, shh, I don't like the studio brand I think the pictures are awful but that is one of the coolest inserts from the era you got a chipper relic um, some more chipper stuff a clear Let's see, Gold Leaf Rookies, Rookie Team, Pinnacle SP, Matchups. Let's see, I don't see any, I don't see any serial numbers on the back of that one. But flip the page and you get a couple of uh, Finest. I think this is 95. So a couple of 95 Finest, a 96 Finest, 97, I believe. Prime Prospect Foil Card. Then one and two and three of the 1993 SP set. Again, another one that Derek Jeter's the headliner, but uh, that's the uh, the initial SP release. Chipper got a foil rookie prospect in there. And then two SPX dual relics. Numbered, not numbered, but you know, you got a jersey bat right there. A couple other Chipper cards. Turn the page and to the man that saved baseball, You've got one, two, and three rookie cards. You got 282 Donruss, 182 Fleer. You got SP Platinum Power. This looks pretty cool. Out of 2000, an upper deck Forte Fielding. Um, die cut, I'm not, I, one that I'm not super familiar with, but there's a, uh, a Ripken insert out of 2000. A couple other inserts right there. There's a, a couple of tops golds from 92. Very nice 97 Bowman International. And I'll tell you, that looks pretty sharp right there. Pretty cool card. More Ripkins. Uh, silver signature. That is uh, minted in Cooperstown parallel. This right here is the uh, uh, small set from 90. The Donruss Learning Series. A Bowman's best against Studio. I don't think I'll have to look look a little closer at some of these that may be base, but um, uh, some nice uh, Zenith ones right there. Continuing on, you've got a that's a nice one right there. You've got a relic game used jersey, amazing greats out of 2000 right there. Insert, insert, insert promo. Uh, some base stuff. An 83 tops that looks very nice. That is a, uh, a second year card that holds some good value. And then you've got this one right here, 94 um, SP Hollow View. This was uh, you know we looked at the uh, the Aaron card uh, earlier, but that is I believe it's an insert from that set, and that is a really nice card. Turn the page and you got Frank Thomas, Big Hurt, a couple of nice inserts, silver signature, insert, die cut, 
Um, some more inserts. I'm not seeing any refractor. Now this right here, this thing is a flipping solid from Pinnacle Express. It's like a solid chunk of pretty thick metal. I'll have to look that one. I'm not something I'm familiar with, but that's a pretty cool card. There we go. Milestones, RBIs. That is a refractor. We've got a couple of electric diamonds. This refractor is at a 1400. Very nice. Turn the page and you see Mike Piazza. Got a die cut, an early chrome, a couple of these inserts. I'll have to check with a black light. Another die cut. Let's see, diamond producers, uh, ultra diamond producers. Cool little insert there. Let's see, we've got one, two, and three tops gold uh, 92, or pardon me, 93 prospects. That is, um, that's the first tops card that Piazza got, and obviously the 92 Bowman was Mike's biggest uh, rookie card, along with the, um, I think it's the 92 Fleer Hot Prospects. Um, but 93 Tops Gold, that's a nice one. You got an Ultra Rising Stars. Is that an infield power? I think it's an infield power. Another insert, another insert, another insert. More Piazza, let's see, a refractor? No, so there's a reprint of that Bowman card. There's an acetate insert. More inserts. That is an uncommon. Tops uh, Finest from 96. Let's see. Card? Cardfrontation hitter, what the heck? There's some stuff in here I don't even recognize. One, two. Uh, we got a, what was that? The um, Starburst. Starburst parallel from Pinnacle, insert, insert, die cut, National Pride die cut. That's a pretty cool card right there. Uh, this one, SPX, very nice. Uh, Flare Showcase, that's, that looks like it's got to be yeah, like a row two. Um, so a little bit shorter, shorter print parallel. A dual relic, some Ultra Pro promo cards, ma a Master Strokes out of, a promo out of 5,000. That's a sample. Um, and then the production line, and I believe, yep, numbered out of 431. And then you've got one, two, and three Bowman's best cuts, and one of them, that one is a refractor, those two are base, so that one is pretty nice. So at this point in time, I wanted to point out that there are two cards that you won't see in this video. Or, actually, you will see them in this video, but not in the binder. I actually pulled them out before making this video because I identified them as cards that really needed to get graded. The first was a 1997 Pinnacle Inside Chipper Jones Diamond Edition, and it graded an SGC8, and I sold it nearly immediately for $200. The other was a 1994 Topps Finest David Justice Refractor. It also graded an SGC8. And as of making this video, I still have it for sale, but I estimate it to be at least worth $100. Additionally, it's getting kind of old adding all the poppy text, so I'm going to scale back on that. We'll still see all the cards that are in the binder, but I'm really only going to point out the key cards that are worth more than, you know, two bucks. Enjoy the rest of the video. Turn the page, and you've got Hideo Nomo. So Hideo kind of didn't fully live up to the you know, big hype and have like a really long career, but he made, he, he maintains some popularity and we've got one, two, man, look at all those die cut silvers, and it looks like three, almost three pages of Hideo Nomo, including a numbered out of 10,000 Diamond King, and then there's a Barry Bonds that's just chilling. All right, turn the page and see some Tony Gwynn, including a refractor, a hollow, a Bowman Chrome International, another one of those uh, Pinnacle Express metal cards, some oddball stuff, a die cut. Uh, next page, uh, see, uh, continuing on with Gwyn, and you've got a Milestones out of 3000 refractor, and then moves to Jeff Bagwell. You got an Artist Proof, a Hollow, a Starburst, uh, an insert reprint. Turn the page to Don Mattingly. I think that is a numbered out of 10,000. Yep, numbered out of 10,000 Leaf Stars. Starburst, 93 SP, which just is a nice set. Manny Ramirez is up next. Uh, there's another uh, 93 Foil. A Lumberjacks. Ooh, that one I may actually keep for myself. 
the uh, that that's a set and it's numbered out of five thousand. I have to check and see if I've got one of those. If not, I'll pull that one for myself. A die cut insert. Turn the page. Raul Mondesi. You now, all right. So we're kind of going downhill in terms of the um, the star power, but uh, ninety four finest. A couple of inserts. Uh, you got continuing with Raul up top, a gold leaf. That is, I believe, the first year of any pack pullable uh, parallels. 1992, you got leaf and tops with their gold. Uh, a couple of Sammy Sosas, including a nice run producer's uh, die cut and a 92 gold. And then Vlad Singer. And I will be honest, I actually get um, quite a few Vlad requests. Um, I think, you know, probably, you know, probably helped by the popularity of Vlad Jr. Vlad Sr. Uh, remains popular with collectors uh, coming in and asking for stuff on my streams. And you've got, this is pretty cool, uh, Donruss rated rookie. Oh, wait, no, that's a Jose Cruz. Then there's, so that's a Vlad upper deck rookie. And then a Finest Gems Refractor from 2000 so that's an interesting card this is a this is jose cruz jr but it is a is it numbered i'm not sure what i'm actually not sure what that card is but it is it's kind of shiny and refractory so that may be something uh let's see we got some albert bell who is that ryan sandberg or tomei is that tomei up there yeah jim tomei ryan sandberg Got some Matt Williams. Got another Jeff Bagwell Chrome. Uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, uh, Kenny Lofton, Hot Gloves. So now we're just kind of scattered. Some Juan gone, Roger Clemens, Gold Label, um, and then a Strikeout Kings and an Oddball. Two Randy Johnson rookie cards. Um, they are. They look like uh, the corrected version. So the uh, the ad is blacked out in the background. Andrew Jones, another guy that actually has uh, some decent popularity, some early stuff, some finest, a chrome, a downer's preferred. Um, turn the page and come into the end, some Mickey Mantles. Why not end with that? But you've got a chrome, or a couple of chromes with the, uh, with the protective covers. I'm not really sure what exactly those are. It's like a Mickey Mantle commemorative set. Um, some other mix, there's a chrome. And then on the very last page, a Studio 97 uh, Mark McGuire jumbo at a 5,000. So that'll probably be worth something. So anyways, I'll get a final count and post it right here when um, uh, once I get a chance to in terms of the number of cards in this binder. But I paid 500 bucks. Was it worth it? <laughs>